Hello and welcome everyone. It is a beautiful day here in my neighborhood and so I couldn't wait to get outside. And just as I start the camera, the wind is picking up again. And oddly enough, it's blowing towards the west. So and on the spot we have alchemy and root. This is a sacred geometry activation for the deck. I try to list all these decks in the description box below. You may hear lots of nature going on in the background. You may even hear a vehicle go by and we hope to stay the natural sounds. Not too much distortion. Shuffle here. This is the Daily Dharma. Dina, thank you for joining us. I appreciate you joining me here. Every bit of your energy that you lend to this will help me to attune to your specific vibrations and read your energy as well as the rest of the collective. We do our best here, but not every single bit of what I speak for will be your message, so make sure you take what resonates and leave the rest for somebody else who needs to hear your message. Okay, yes, we have 34, Passion coming out first with number 10, Authority. So something that's gotten... Gaia under the deck, something is, I feel, an internal passion under the, or coming off the top here of the deck, 38, remember, let's just get these curves all out one more, universal love, 44, I must remember 44, I take that as an angel code, I always invoke the powers that be, calling all sorts of Beings, I ask you to synchronize with that and call in any beings of the light, ancestors, or otherwise that you'd like to call into the reading. And let's move into the Shaman's Dream Oracle deck. I'm loving this new deck, it's still a little slippery, so I'm going to give it a good shot. We have Unmarked Trail, Revelation number 57 here, and the number one card, A Tidy House, Clarity and Organization. So, it looks like you've traveled this safe and narrow path for some time, and you, I'm seeing this as that zero point energy in the heart space here, in the center, in the vortex engine, or, <laughs> vortex engine? What? Vortex energy that is traveling down through the root into the soul of the earth, earth star chakra and the vortex going up through the crown into the soul star chakra here. So it's like you've done a lot of internal tidying, cleaning up your vibration, alignment, but I'm feeling that your garden is lacking dynamic color and you're like here I'm waiting for the for the trees to burst forth so there's this feeling of emergence clarity and organization that came out already once before in some readings I intend for these all to be timeless readings so if you catch that has a title that resonates go ahead and click on it probably has some messages for you. So yeah, cleaning up your vibration, cleaning up your space, perhaps even moving locations, moving jobs, some sense of new passion is emerging. <laughs> Dragon's Horde, protecting the future. Here's a lovely little nest egg. And some keys here. Oh, beautiful. Number 12. 
under the passion card too. Let's continue to get them all out here. We have the vanishing year, ego sublimation number 58 under authority. 29, horn cactus, resourcefulness. Under remembrance. And 59, the wailing tree, reconciliations. 59, under the 44, universal love card. And under the deck, straddling worlds. Wandering between realms. And it's wanting to show me underneath that is lost in space needing direction. Okay, so we're checking in on our direction today. Let's make sure our cards aren't going to float away. Let's get an oracle card from first the Kwan Yin deck. So what I'm feeling here is you have dragon's energy and I don't I don't know if most of you will be familiar with Dragon's Energy, but how I mean that is you have a profound power at your disposal. And we have Sweeping Sister Willow, 31, coming out, looking up to the sun. Orchid Priestess of Destiny under the deck, 21. I feel like you come here on a specific soul mission, and many of us have, so we don't want to get too specific here because the more specific we get in a collective reading, the more we may miss the point in trying to be specific. So you know what you've been channeling, I'm being told, and we've been looking into the cards in the Daily Dharma, coming along seeing which things are popping in. We've been talking about ego sublimation already. This vanishing mirror is... Okay, we've talked before about perhaps the Dunnings-Kruger effect, if you've followed me in the past. And it, for those of you who don't know it, it's a really interesting phenomenon where those people who are very confident and... Well, if, let me back that up. People that are uneducated and don't know a lot about a subject usually are very confident with, with their amount of knowledge and they become very confident with that. People that are very knowledgeable and have done an ex, ex, extensive amount, not of study, but of true wisdom seeking and that comes through in philosophy, ethics, morals, uh, witnessing witnessing everything and coming to different conclusions and transforming the self. Um, so this transformation of self and, and getting distracted. Uh, I'm hearing that this is like this profound power has been dormant inside of you. I've been seeing this dragon's cord as you've already done your work, like we saw on that twisty, twisty card at the beginning, that board of seas coming up and going down. It's like you're exuding an amount of power that perhaps you're aware of at this point. And it's not only the passions that have come to you all along. And by that, it doesn't need to be a profound calm. It's just the passion that you have for life, let's say. And sharing that forth with other individuals. It's the way that you use your energy. And you're reaching through the looking glass here into other realms and, and seeing someone who's learning to scry or who has been scrying watching images and watching them transform, perhaps their own image in the mirror. You know, as your view of yourself changes, the way you look at yourself in the mirror will change. There's this remembrance with the horned cactus with resourcefulness. And there's something from the past that
that you still have in your energy frequency. Perhaps since birth, under the deck here on the Kali deck, is it Devi Ma Kali? Some geese coming in and turn on the clock. And Dumabati? See this as birth and death, transformation, right? And many of these Kali images will have those intense images. So let's just take a moment to purge some demons. I hope that this isn't too loud on the speaker. It feels really good if you have a nice bell, crystal, glass, and some other function calling the birds. And just ringing in, bringing in the new energy. So you're a gift to this world. Spirit is lifting you up in the palm of the hands of all the powers that be. And I dislike the term chosen one. <clears throat> I prefer the terms that are more accountable because passively we can't just be chosen and be entitled and words are very important. So it's not that we're chosen, it's that we've agreed to take our choices through the eye of the needle, that integrity and intentionality that has lifted us up and up and up. And that's why on these daily Dharma feeds, I like to focus on Dharma specifically as separate from karma because we all have some lingering karma, something that comes along with us in this lifetime that we're working through. And so I always say that healing is ongoing and that once we attain full healing, that we're ready perhaps to make our transition into some other type of form. So we do have some road noise here. Take it as it is. It's real life, folks. So, yeah, there's something that was very challenging to you from a very early age that is perhaps ongoing in your field because I'm seeing this prickly nature and the horns of a Taurus, perhaps. Ooh, and I'm seeing above the head of the cactus. It looks like in a chess piece, the uh, the knight piece in a chess game. <clears throat> so yeah, somebody's felt as though they needed to be guarded, strategic, and very protected. And but along those lines, I'm feeling that the choices that you've made, even if you've made some mistakes, forgive yourself your your trespasses. I'm hearing. And forget, forgive those that trespass against you. So I have a few animals here on property. That's my Dorothy listening to me and mad that I haven't brought her out to graze yet. So I'm feeling that you were spoon-fed some type of information as we all are on the social socialization path where we just become who we're becoming we need that socialization and input from others but this dragon energy is awakening the passions in you are awakening they're expanding and something perhaps has triggered this but it's part of your destiny now that you've been walking in integrity for this amount of time You've burned off and transmuted quite a lot of this old karmic patterning. You've transmuted a good amount of ancestral karma. The crow is calling in some crow buddies. We have all kinds of animals here. So what do we do about this remembrance? We can clear our field in a number of ways. I'm seeing someone basking in sunlight of course we've talked about that 
breath work is highly underestimated. I talk about this a lot. It synchronizes your breath or your body with your spirit through the breath in the body, oxygenating every cell. Draw the energy of the earth up through the base of the feet. And if you can, barefoot on the earth. It's a little cool for that here, I'll admit, so I'm not doing it right now, later when I do some gardening. But it's important to connect with the earth in some type of a way. You can simply fill your body, your entire physicality, your vessel, and see this light developing at the core of you, this brilliant white light. The color is irrelevant. If you see other colors, it's just fine. All colors are good and okay, and we have all colors in our in our aura, in our world. And so, as you perceive it, feel into it. That's when I first started awakening to my sightedness. It was during meditation. I would see bands of color, energy frequencies, and that's how the angels even started speaking to me. If you buy into that, you know, if you think I'm in crazy train, you should probably just check out another reader because I'm going all in, folks. And I feel like this reading is for somebody who does go all in like that on their magic. And it's coming out in front of the world and everyone, for everyone to see. And it's beautiful and it's being well received. But this remembrance is bringing in will I be well received because in the past somebody perhaps challenged that self-image and we allowed that to take up residence in our body so imagine that white light expanding with every breath bringing the breath in through the in through the feet up 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 as much as you can imagine and down and out slowly with every breath and imagine that ball of light growing in your core until it expands even beyond the confines of your body to your entire Merkaba field, your whole auric field, and just imagine yourself breathing into cellular wellness, healing, and invoke any, any deity that floats your boat to have them protect, guide, and help you with reaching your clarity and purging all residues and toxins from your field that do not serve. And take a moment to call back in, especially with this prickly cactus, any energy that you have pushed away that you wanted to pull towards you. Because I'm seeing someone who's feeling isolated here and is ready to bring in greater greater community. I feel that many of us have been in hermit mode, which feels so sacred and so healing to so many of us. When we get back to that zero point energy of self, it's just like so expansive. And that's when our passion can really start to speak to us and push us into a point of you know, maybe I do know a little bit more of what I'm talking about, or, you know, just maybe I, I just can't sit here on all this knowledge anymore. Spirit's telling me the more you know, the more you should share forth, right? And so there's a message blooming, a seed that we've nurtured that's coming forward. So as above, so below, as within, so without. As the universe, so the soul, I'm hearing. If you see another doing well, that's a reflection of your greatness that you're seeing and respecting. And reflect that very clearly in your mirror and say, I am that excellence. When I'm in my zone, I am my excellence. I am that excellence. And when you see someone else that you would judge, same thing. I have been there. I have that feeling somewhere in my vibration and it doesn't feel good and if I'm in a better place I may feel rejecting of it or I may even feel a little bit accepting of that moment and saying wow I've gone a long way I've come a long way along my destiny you know there, 
there's flowers coming out from this individual as she sings her praise as I sit back here doing my tones, meditating prior to the message, singing to the birds like some kind of snow white wannabe, living the dream. And I'm feeling somebody else here has their own musical gifts that came up before. This one also shown with a musical gift in their lap. Maybe somebody gave you something like a guitar or a keyboard or something else and you've been wanting to practice or learn more about that. I think that, that if you're inclined to do that, you should absolutely do that. So there's this other message coming through with universal love and the wailing tree, reconciliation. I feel this is a huge amount of soul reclamation. Word? World? It's not the right world. We're in the wrong world. So are you feeling a little bit not, not really feeling connected and bonded with your situation? It looks like somebody in a grief process. Ancestors are crying along with you just a little bit. I don't, I, that's the wrong word, not crying, but they're, they're feeling that compassion for you and holding you in their arms here. And feeling somebody who's had a lot of, a lot of dark nights and perhaps following a particular situation, spirit has you. Wailing tree is reconciling with all that you are. And if somebody made you question your authority, if somebody questioned your passion, and that's all you can remember, you definitely have some energy that needs to be cleared out. 22, 22. So if you need a friend to help you on clearing those things out, go seek that out. It is time for that. Here comes the wind. So there's something that feels almost, um, I'm seeing the auric shield and I'm seeing sacred blueprints and sacred images, light language, markings all around the perimeter of this auric shield and the individual is is bestowed gifts upon upon contracted agreeing to come in here on their soul contract right? translating as I go and there's um, there's this enormous amount of universal love from that point and some of us have allowed that seed to remain nurtured from day one. But I'm feeling that, <clears throat> that there's parts of you that have been questioned, disowned, doubted, and this puts these things outside of your view, staying into the safety zone, and these things, taking in other people's opinions, sort of compresses our our sense of self and our perceivable energy field and makes it a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller than someone let's say that's fully tapped and turned on. And then as we reclaim all of ourself, we're like, hey, that doesn't belong to me, uh, or you know, that what you said didn't belong to me. I'm going to take back that portion of myself that I, I allowed you to kind of keep from me, that I allowed myself to keep distance from because of fear of some type of not being fully accepted into the tribe that was available at that time. But as, as this ego 
An ego can also contain the false evidence appearing real, those fear dynamics and complexes, shadow selves, the achievement mind, and needing to prove any father complex, mother complex wasn't nurtured enough, or, or I didn't have enough opportunity to nurture someone else. You know, it could be any one of these complexes that can come in, and as these are one by one, I'm seeing somebody like just kind of slashing them away, just one by one, just, nope, that's, that's no longer relevant, no longer relevant, no longer necessary, be gone with this, be gone with that. And this individual's no longer healthy, they, they were here to trigger me, I witnessed that, I have, I have accepted, I have acknowledged, and I have learned those lessons, and I am signing off on that soul contract. And I am going to take that and burn that in the alchemical fire of my passionate inner self, in my bestial virgin self, my inner child that is playfully aware that everyone here is just here to activate all that I came here to be. That's what I'm feeling. And so putting to death any of these old selves in just being that demon slayer, that demon slayer, get your wings, claim them now, you don't have to remain in that underworld, somebody may have told you that you were somehow, some way, less than, there's good magic in that as well, I'm seeing a Japanese beetle crawling across my tablet here, very interesting. So I'm seeing this tree like like burning down this tree a little bit and I feel like this is your passionate fires like this wailing tree. It's like hitting rock bottom in an addictive cycle of of falling back asleep on your own beautiful journey. And finally burning through the illusion, slap just shattering the mirror that has kept you captivated, oh, this Harry Potter reference where the, the mirror keeps him looking into what he should be, or, or what he wishes most with all of his heart, and keeps seeing his deceased family, and he never really knew them, he grew up in a bad family that wasn't his, so, I don't know if somebody here was adopted, thinking of adopting, thinking of fostering, you have such a profound inner light, to share with the world. You have transmuted so much of, of everything that you came here to, to transmute, and you're ready to take flight as the beetle just takes off. Sweeping Sister Willow, underneath the wailing tree in Universal Love, it's like the universe has been here holding your hand, leading you on the straight and narrow as much as you would allow for that guidance to come through, as much as you could perceive, and You've taken a lot of the right steps and you've cried your tears to cleanse your soul that were necessary. And there's this alchemical reignition of that sacred inner flame. Now, of course, virgin doesn't mean celibate, if, although many may be with this reference coming up. And it doesn't necessarily mean what we've attributed that word to, it means purified by the inner fires. Take that as you will. So somebody here has been walking between worlds, has been that rainbow bridge. Maybe you work with animals in here for somebody here. You're definitely an earth angel working with some elementals as well. And that's exactly what I mean. You're a passionate, passionate conduit of divine universal love and you I feel you've already awakened but there's been something just holding you back and I can imagine what will pop out in these cards so let's just see here I appreciate you guys so very much if this resonates with you go ahead and Give me some love. Pop that like button if you don't mind. Share it with somebody. Sharing is caring.
I appreciate you very much. Turn on the bell, subscribe if you want to make sure to catch those uploads. We talked about this just briefly, addiction and self-medication here. Yep. Somebody's been in some low spots and you're repurifying. I'm feeling somebody also that's in some type of recovery. It could be from substances. It could be from something else, as you know. It could be from toxic relationships, toxic family members. It could be I mean, anything you know your story. But it, with addiction and self-medication, you know it's time to get lucid and stay clear. You've been taken for granted. And that's why you perhaps didn't see your value because others weren't seeing your value. But you need to stand in your authority because you have been on a journey. Somebody is in regret and they regret taking you for granted. They're sorry. U, V, W, X, Y, Z, name, initials, whatever pops in, all of these cards don't have to resonate every time, but U, V always reminds me of somebody really might need to get some more sunshine, if you're not sensitive to the sun, it's a young female popped out in reverse so somebody may be crying right now or in a very low spot trust the tears to illuminate for you everything that isn't working everything that isn't honoring your path your soul light you deserve everything that anyone deserves you are the sacred God or goddess of your inner temple and I will tell you what if you walk with that authority if you take time every day to tend to your hygiene and tend to your the way that you present yourself it doesn't matter if nobody sees you staying in your jammies all day every day is cozy but it also brings a big Fear and guilt and and there's this energy of lethargy that can lead to a feeling of sloth, slovenly. It's that uh, seven deadly sins coming through. So pull yourself up from this karmic cycle. It's ending. That's why it's intensifying for you. Is because you're getting to that point where you're going to say, oh, hell no, never again. When you start to awaken, you go up and you go down the scale. Up and down, up and down. But every time that you go down, you try to go down just a little less far. But every once in a while, we slip. Sometimes we make ne negative ground. Sometimes we fall back in bored easily. It's that, it's that lethargy. And yesterday we had an, I think it was the cancer reading, a sense of lack of inspiration and needing to get back into something that brings you joy, recognizing when you're in a habit pattern of pursuing what is negatively triggering to give you that oomph of energy boost and that ends up being us siphoning energy from a situation instead of pursuing something that we're passionate about with gusto because that stuff lights us up from the inside it's that inner fire that gets lit and you've been called to it and called to it so this dragon energy is calling you back it's saying you have a nest egg that you've accumulated you've gathered many resources whether that be uh, money or you know bricks in the yard I've got a lot of bricks I'm excited about my bricks I mean don't get caught up in the pursuit of the almighty coin because abundance comes in so many varied forms this property I see this ground every little grain and microbe in the soil as black gold I couldn't be happier and every day I give thanks for those little microbes because I am never alone.
<laughs> That's what happens when you're an introvert. So, yeah. Don't hate me because I'm a nerd. Nerd, by the way, my friend defines as anyone who is not afraid to be super excited about something that they're very passionate about. So, yeah, let your, let your weird hang out and let your weird find other weird because there's a reason it comes through the message. Dragon energy is intense. It's, it's very triggering to weaker individuals. And if from an early age you were born with that dragon energy, I have Pluto in my ascendant. I know about that dragon energy. And I denied it and I, oh, I'm going to be nice and I'm going to be accommodating because I've got a Libra ascendant and my Pluto is in Libra. So, <laughs> so it's that nicey nice and Pluto's like, Step aside every once in a while, you know? Yes. Self-sabotage, self-fulfilling prophecy, negative mindset. So there's something here that needs to be laid to rest. Those addictive patterns and habitual ways of being, habitual ways perhaps of people pleasing or something on that nature, of that nature, not reaching for that goal, letting other people have the win when you secretly wanted it and perhaps lying to yourself and telling you yourself that you love to see other people win which we all do but you deserve the win once in a while especially if you know the answer raise your hand whatever that means I mean I'm not in class but if you're taking a class or if you're if you're volunteering for something if you know the answer gather that courage draw it up Expand yourself and stand firm and true and tall in the truth and speak with that authority because you got it. You are channeling and you're, I'm feeling you've been reborn, reborn from the fires. There's a young male on the, on the table here who may be uh, self-sabotaging, inner child under the deck, leader, entrepreneur, trendsetter, boss. Ooh, there's I love you and full moon lunar eclipse. I was trying to get a reaction. They are your secret admirer. They have dark features, eyes, hair, or complexion. 9999, they're also completing a cycle um, of accumulated mastery learning like a veteran. It may be a veteran. Q, R, S, or T may be a relevant initial. Anything else before we want to go here? So yes, something about this dragon energy and stepping into your authority. Any advice from spirit before we go? Any advice? There's a timeline jump, quantum leap at hand the moment you take your self care to heart blow yourself up ooh under the deck chiron is the wounded here healer asteroid god senator in mythology it, he was he was a senator which most of them were very beastly and driven by their instincts and their primal urges and he was a philosopher and he was half god and he was wounded shot in the ankle and the achilles tendon by a poison arrow and since he couldn't die he just had this wound that never healed and in your own chart please do look up for your own benefit your chiron placement if you know your date of birth, you should be able to just get online and find that pretty easily because Chiron doesn't move around that fast in the chart. Somebody needs some freedom. Uranus, Aries, Sagittarian, Aquarian energies are here. Maybe a Cancer also. Or somebody needs freedom to take self-care of themselves to retreat into their shell for a minute gather their resources. They wanted you to chase them. So Chiron, yes, Chiron is that wound that never heals. So depending on the sign placement 
in the house placement, it will change. For instance, um, in Taurus, the sign that we're seeing with prickly cactus and where our nodes are at right now shows that we're collectively moving towards that north node of destiny in the sign of Taurus, which says we want to be more secure with our voice, with our body, with our finances, with our ability to attract and manifest and invoke and conjure. We want to manifest a life of, of leisure. And is that so wrong? We want to have lushness and a plenty and bountiful harvest all around us. And it takes hard work. And in the Taurian energy, we're being told not to be afraid of being industrious and, and working hard. Something big's coming down the road. Uh, with the south node in Scorpio, it shows that something needs to be released. This death cycle, death and rebirth. And it's FedEx. <laughs> Oh, hello, FedEx. Uh, yeah, something needs to be cut free, cut loose. Uh, a death cycle, a transformation in your energy, rising above the olden remembrances of old, the ancestral karma, and giving, giving life to the ancestral intentions. They want you to heal. They wished that they could have healed to the extent that you are healing through every epiphany that is so difficult and such a little bitter pill to swallow in this moment. They are calling you forward. All right, let's close out this reading. Oh. Workaholic is under the deck, so don't work too hard. Cut cords release with something that is keeping you tied. If it's that almighty dollar, I mean, when are you going to have enough? Are you ever going to have enough? Maybe just cut out one of those bills that you might have or might not have. Or take yourself a little more seriously and apply for a job that you'd love to have that would pay so much more. Or for those of you that are, we did see the entrepreneur card earlier, I always love to encourage people to get a plan going, to do your research, and to have your courage and your, your authority, and to jump off into your own path of excellence. It's there for you. Build bridges with somebody with light-haired features. Maybe there's somebody that you could create a business partnership with. Chakra activation, be still, integrate, balance, and meditate. I am sovereign. There's that rainbow energy. And I'm seeing this as a card that came out yesterday with somebody like this, and there's the stars funneling down into their hands, or perhaps their energy going up into the cosmos, giving it up to the cosmos to solve, up to the powers to be that be. So, all right, let's just close this out. Okay, most people are just trying to survive. No two flowers are the same, yet all are beautiful in their own way. Comparisons are odious because they presume all other things are equal, which is never the case. Between me and you, the universe. Time to make a demonstration. Is it? With all that passion, that dragon energy? The older the soul, the softer the glance, the quicker the smile, and the sooner to say, I love you, yourself. They also skip and wink more than normal and hold hands with those they walk beside utterly fearless the universe karma is on your side at the 44 mark and just one of these 51 every being in the universe is an expression of the Tao. it springs into existence unconscious perfect free it takes on a physical body. Let circumstances complete it. That is why every being spontaneously honors the Tao. The Tao gives birth to all beings, nourishes them, maintains them, cares for them, comforts them, protects them, takes them back to itself, creating without possessing, acting without expecting, guiding without interfering, that is why love of the Tao is in the very nature of all things. Beautiful.
4455. Take it to heart. You are more amazing every day. Your quest is here to be tapped in, to turn you on with your passionate self. Be what you want to be, my dears. All right, I thank you so very much. Enter the vortex. Jump in that vortex. It's there for you. So thank you so much. And once again, I appreciate your energy very much. I'm only offering very few limited readings right now, only through sending me an email at impressivewarrior at gmail.com. And other than that, I'm looking forward to doing so many more of these. I love and appreciate you all so very much, and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.